Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. This video of mine, my video feed, is not going to be very good, so I'm going to be turning itself off very soon. But Abhijit's video is loud and clear, and he'll be answering all your questions. Please like, share, and <clears throat> please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And also don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. And here comes Abhijit Ayer Doron Mitra. Vail, Vail, Vetri Vail. And Vetri Vail, Vail to you, Abhijit. How are you? Very nice. Say hello, Aprameya. Aprameya says hello. Oh. <laughs> All right. She seems to be happy. All right. Let's jump he, into he, the he. question. Oh, he, he, he appears to be happy. So uh, today he's going by the name of Apram uh, Tamarasan, meaning King of Tamil. Okay. Next question, please. First question, please. <laughs> no, I have not uh, okay. cared much about them. I, I, I have not read them either. Okay, Aditya B wants to know why don't you do a book cast here or something? What is a book What's cast? A book cast? <laughs> I have no idea. Podcast, book cast? No. Next question, Vamsi. Uh, question to both of you What is the org called Hindus for Human Rights in the US? Do you know that? I know what it is. No. You, you tell us. So, then. Hindus for Human Rights. Yeah, Hindus for Human Rights is an organization that is floated by the same lumpens that have floated things like CAIR, IIMC, and so on. It is a red herring to try and divide the Hindus, and everybody, anybody, just stay away from this organization. These are a bunch of fakes. They do have a Hindu name in the front, but you know how these things go. We know for a fact that they are being funded by CARE, so skip and move on. By the way, do you know the girls who got abused by that woman in the viral video, when the Hindu mm. organizations approached them to help them, they said, we don't want to have anything to do with Hindutva. And guess who they teamed up with? Care. Yes. Yes. So they, 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 they ended up inadvertently in the arms of HHR. Unfortunate, but I think that will be corrected soon. Vamsi wants to know again, will Supreme Court reverse Article 370 revocation? No. It's done deal now. There's no scope for reversal. Ishan Sharma wants to know, do you think the way Kedriwal is attacking these days, especially on Modi, the downfall of him has started and he's on course of losing the Gujarat and HP elections badly? How to tackle him in Delhi? Well, look, it's just really tough to say. The problem with Kejriwal is the same as the problem with Mamta. They're not able to transcend the linguistic barrier because technically, if you look at it, Punjab is technically North Delhi in a sense. You know, it's a it, it, it's a continuum in that sense. So what is happening here is that Kejriwal is compensating for his failures in Punjab. And that is the main thing. I do not think they will be able to make a great headroom in Gujarat, just like they did not in Himachal Pradesh. And uh, I think a lot of what we're hearing about AAP making headroom is the fact that somebody wants an alternative to the Congress, which is simply not emerging. Now, does this mean this is the downfall of Kejriwal? Absolutely not. Because remember, his... Uh, uh, organizational managers are all from the old uh, Congress school. Unlike Modi, who doesn't know how to build uh, organizational control, because it's not a BJP government, it's an IAS government with outside help from the BJP, outside support from the BJP. The Kejriwal government is in fact a Kejriwal government. Everybody bends over backwards to him. And to understand how that works, you just have to see what happened with the liquor policy, why so many people got raided. All the babus and things. Uh, things are going up to the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governors refuse to sign certain things because they are not signed by the chief minister. Being they're being signed by the babus. 
where do babus get the courage to sign a document that is not going to be signed by the chief minister it obviously comes when you have co-opted them into a system of corruption no so understand he has co-opted that system completely he has co-opted the system in punjab completely you are not going to be able to get rid of him from punjab for the next 15 20 years he is going nowhere in delhi for the next 15 20 years minimum okay once they take over it is absolute takeover there is no reversing it so i don't think it is the end of uh, kejriwal's downfall at all and how to tackle him in delhi will get somebody with their ears and uh, uh, eyes to the ground in delhi you know i've said this before on the program and several other programs you know that uh, idiotic scheme that was shoved down hardeep's uh, hardeep singh puri's throat uh, which hardeep singh puri had nothing to do with which was the legalization of slums it actually went it, it turned a Th- there was no tide for you anyway but it turned a significant percentage of the population virulently against you because it went in favor of the landlords and against the tenants most of those houses are tenant occupied houses and overnight the rents went up significantly sometimes even 100% and you expected to get votes for it so it was stupidly thought out even inke bas ki baat nahi hai delhi wapas jeetna Abhishek wants to know, sir. Kashmir society is very radicalized society. A good amount of security forces come from them. Has there been any instances of black sheep within them, and how many army and CRPF deals with it? See, there's no real uh, major instances of black sheep within them, as far as I know. Uh, fragging and things are common. See, it's almost impossible to tell you uh, uh, what fragging what the circumstance fragging is you know friendly fire where you're under so much psychological stress you go shoot your own officers and uh, uh, kill your own colleagues but as far as i can tell within the police even uh, there's uh, no instances that i know of uh, 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 any of this happening because there has always been an unwritten convention that you don't go after the families of these people and things like that it was broken for a while in between but then it uh, went back to the normal thing i have not seen any instances of it i could be wrong but i don't follow these micro details carefully but as far as i can tell there have been none no military officer has ever brought this up with me in our private conversations mandar kanik wants to know india has urbanized but our parliament doesn't reflect it how will rural centric policies affect indian development now hmm So I've given a whole speech on this, but uh, basically it is anti-urban apartheid, which reflects in all your policies, where technically sixty percent of your population is urban, technically speaking, not on paper. On paper, only forty-five percent is. But sixty uh, percent of your seats are rural, which is why we're talking about rural toilets, rural this, rural that. Where is the urban regeneration? Where are the jobs for the manufacturing jobs for urban? nothing it is a system of apartheid and it it reflects in your social policies there's absolutely no urgency for manufacturing and all the urgency is for a uh, farmer centric rural centric policies you tell me one thing that has been done for the urban population comparative to uh, rural electrification uh, the expansion of mn rega uh uh rural uh, uh wet toilets uh, anything like that or, or even the rolling back of the farm laws nothing so th- this is what apartheid leads to it leads to skewed progress in this case it is no progress because they are milking the 60% urban areas dry to feed the 40% rural areas which have zero incentive to develop uh but have all the electoral power Maliban Bhattacharya wants to know a lot of IA generals have voiced their opinion of India giving up its NFU status vis-a-vis China in case PLU PLA managed to take over a large chunk of Indian territory your view who's IA general Swen Indian army you know and okay yeah okay so let me read this question out minus all the jargon a lot of ge- indian army generals have voiced their opinion on india giving up its nuclear no first use status 
vis-a-vis -vis China in case the Chinese army manages to take over a large chunk of Indian territory? Your view? Question mark. We should not, and I'll tell you why. The uh, no first use is a sign of confidence. It's a sign of confidence that our military is not going to uh, collapse rapidly. So what ends up happening is it, it's almost a marker saying, "Tum zyada mera bigard nahi sakte ho. Kar, karo jo karna hai." The second thing is it is merely a pledge. You don't have to follow it. Tomorrow you can get all the benefits of the NFU. And tomorrow, if indeed there is a catastrophic collapse, you can still use it first. Nobody's going to hold you to it. Right. You can always change. Your nuclear doctrine can be changed like that. There is no legality to a nuclear doctrine per se. So do it. Who's stopping you? But don't say it out open. That's all. Next. Hello. Next question. Sheen? Arthik Chanki wants to know, would you say that ISKCON followers, especially the foreigners, are evangelical in nature? Who are the best converters of other religion followers to Hinduism? I don't know. I've never seen this. Uh, next question from Ishan Sharma. What are your views on Zuckerberg's thing on Hunter Biden's scandal on Joe Rogan's podcast during the 2020 president elections? How will it impact the midterms? Please do. Tell the projected numbers. I don't know the projected numbers. Uh, but look, everybody knew that the suppression of the Hunter Biden scandal was coordinated. It was uh, uh, systematic. It was decided. And it was going to be, it was carried out by every single uh, uh, media platform in a very, very systematic way. The main revelation there was that the FBI asked him to do it which shows you exactly what he's been saying, which is that the deep state was working to undermine him. So it has pretty much validated everything. That's true. Next question, Maliban. Can you state the reason why communism didn't make much impact in USA, even though workers suffered similarly as they did in Europe? They didn't actually suffer in America as much as they did in Europe. Uh, and see, the, the main reason for that was, see, in Europe, it was overpopulated and there was very limited space for you to farm. Uh, I think, is it a Jeffrey Archer novel or something? I forget. It was, it's, it's an unusual novel Is that in that it's set in rural America. And what used to happen in families was, as a guarantee, because there was so much farmland, you used to have part of the family farming and another half of the family which would go to work in industrial jobs. And as those industrial jobs started yielding more, it, there was never a space constraint. Remember places like uh, Birmingham and things like that, there is a significant space constraint. You're living in extremely cloistered circumstances and things like that. This was number one to begin with. In other terms, so for example, a lack of worker protection and things like that, yes, they did suffer. But the point there was, remember, unlike Europe, which was a heavily stratified society, it didn't matter how much money you made, you were still a scumbag from, you couldn't compete with Lord Rutledge or Lord Bramley or Lord Buncombe or whatever their name is. You were restricted to a certain, there was financial mobility, but not social mobility. In America, the nobility was made of people who became rich. If you were a rags to riches story, you were celebrated. So there was also this, you know, light in the end of the tunnel where everybody went along with capitalist exploitation in the hope that they too will become capitalist exploiters. It was a fair chance for everyone to become a capitalist exploiter. They were constantly dreams. So you look at the harshest part of that industrialization. What happens simultaneously is this move towards the West. It's the great movement towards the West. You know, the what's it called? The discovery of the West? What uh, What is that thing where all those convoys used to go West for prospecting and things like that into the desert and things like that, Shri? Uh, I'm trying to remember. There's a specific the, term. It's a Clark expedition to West. No, uh, no, not the, the expedition. It was the... Uh, 
uh, it, it was a whole migration of a lot of people. No, not the Great Escape. No. Uh, anyway, th- there was a great migration from the Eastern states to Central Amer- to Central USA and then Western USA to pioneers, discover new right. lands and pioneers. The pioneers, yeah, to discover new lands and things like that. So, see, there were lots of societal pressure valves that got created. So, it was like a pressure cooker in uh, uh, Britain. Or Europe, it was like an old pressure cooker that did not have the gasket to uh, release pressure if the uh, uh, whistle failed. Whereas in America, you had a non-failure whistle plus you had the gasket. Remember, at that time, uh, uh, the uh, Americans, at least white male Americans, had more say in their politics that the average white peasant in Britain did in his own. So all of these acted, and that parliamentary pressure is the whistle. The rest of it that I described first is the pressure, uh, uh, is the gasket around it. Because, you know, the main function of the gasket, you don't realize this, but this is a old, this is a TTK invention. What Volvo did for cars by the three-point seat belt, TTK did for pressure cookers by inventing the gasket. Before, it just used to be metal on metal. There was no rubber in between. Because when the pressure builds up, the gasket gives way and releases steam and that prevents fatal uh, pressure cooker explosion. So that is what happened. The gold rush, the gold rush, that's it. Thank you, Mandar. It is the gold rush. No, Louis, it is not manifest destiny. Manifest destiny is the belief that America would be a a, a thing from coast to coast. So that was different. That was the political one. The uh, 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 the gold rush is the Great Eastern. So thank you, Mandar, for bringing that out. Next question, Devanjan. Devanjan Banerjee wants to know what factors are preventing Pakistan from becoming a free and open democracy such as Bangladesh, Iran, Turkey, and India. Who is to blame for it? Um, India is somewhat a democracy. Look, see, this comes from the belief that all countries can become democracies. All countries cannot become democracies. I very much come from that school which believes that democracy is a privilege you get when you're further down the uh, evolution chain. Okay. Uh, uh, Turkey is not an open democracy anymore. It has never been an open democracy, realistically speaking. Iran, what are you talking about? Iran being an open democracy. Bangladesh, again, not. Devanjan, I'm sorry, but your politics are horribly wrong. India is much more open than Bangladesh, Iran, or Turkey, boss. Uh, Bangladesh has had many military coups. Even today, Sheikh Hasina can't do anything without a military first approving. Iran is a mullahcracy. The different ways of controlling it, but the mandate of the people is always completely subverted or subjugated. Turkey, it is not. It is nowhere near. Uh, So, uh, Pakistan was, you know, you can see this with the benefit of hindsight. Turkey should have because it developed. Iran did develop to the point where it could have become a democracy. It was mistakes. Pakistan is still a feudal state. A few people control everything. About 200,000 people, the uh, military, uh, the uh, uh, landlords and the uh, business fellas control everything. There is no impetus for it to become a free and open society. Look, democracy comes naturally the more the wealth that happens. You look at this in the East or the West. When does democracy come? Democracy mostly comes after industrialization. In the East, Korea, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, uh, 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 Japan, they were all horrible, horrible dictatorships. They moved towards democracy only when they industrialized. Automatically, naturally. Because what happens is, When you're industrializing, social pressure is so great, you need an extremely strong state controlling things. Once industrialization is achieved, the state has to take a backseat and allow the people to grow. So Japan didn't become a democracy because of the goodness of its military's heart. And remember, before World War II, the military tried to control it. Even there, there were coups and whatnot. Uh, There was that period just before World War II where I think there were 10 prime ministers in the space of two, three years. Uh, Taiwan, uh, uh, Chiang Kai-shek was a horrible dictator. Not as bad as Mao Zedong, but he was still quite nasty. His son, Tsinghua, uh, was just as nasty a dictator. 
but he started the democratization process slowly for survival for survival because he realized that now people are rich the kind of societal pressure you're going to get when i get marched off into the night by a counter coup is not there so i can open up it is good for the people it's what the people want and this is how it works on same with south korea it happened very very naturally with north korea it was the reverse process north korea industrialized before the south but they industrialized because they decided ideologically the preservation of the party and the system is more important than the wealth of the people and they went in reverse with pakistan where is the societal impetus to become a free and open democracy so it won't work the same reason why america didn't succeed in making a democracy out of afghanistan basically next she do you want to read the question out or should i sorry about that i was muted what effect will the privatization of education through coaching institutions have on higher education in the future look i can tell you 90% of these coaching educations are absolute bs okay they are there for a reason because your primary education is so trashy and you have gone about it in the most haphazard way possible you cannot have four boards you cannot have teaching that is incompatible with your entrance exams and things like that okay the first thing you need to do is it it is not what it is leading to it is what it is already manifesting for you what does a coaching institution mean it means that your schools private or public are incapable of teaching you what you need to to get in so it's clearly a disconnect no right and then there's quotas for local board and this and that and this thing you have to get rid of all of that you can't have icsc cbsc and center then state board then anglo indian and then god knows how many uh, and even those state boards so even those four the state boards each one is completely different from the other and each one is not synthesized to the college education being offered so you need to have a very comprehensive education reform which the new education policy does not envisage there isn't even the movement to standardize you know so for example education on the concurrent list there is not even a movement to standardize the sciences and mathematics and things like that there isn't even a movement to standardize your basic humanities where the state can teach you additional state history and things like that and optimally the way they should have been done was the state teaches you additional state history which you have to be fluent in plus the state language okay but have the rest of it all interchangeable with everything else no that as different as night and day when i was studying in uh, cbsc uh, uh, for my uh, 10th 11th and 12th the syllabus of the state board was completely different they could solve our uh, 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 and tell me integration differentiation is the same no it uh, integration doesn't change in india uh, or differentiation doesn't change in india from there but the kind of way in true, which true. those questions framed were like what the hell is this man we haven't studied this format because it wasn't problem solving it wasn't learning from first principles it was rote you've been taught this format and there is a specific way of solving this and therefore if you have not learned this way of solving this you have no way of applying it to something else so th- there is a lot of issues which are wreaking havoc it is not in the future what you are seeing is the disaster in the making right now which manifests in 97% of engineers not being able to problem solve so that is what you are seeing the coaching institutes are essentially a bridge they are essentially a bridge there a bridge just like a state board can't solve a central board problem a state and central board student can't solve the immediate post 12th standard entrance exam that he or she is meant to take next um okay. kj wants to know your opinion on ram goha's book india after gandhi ha <sighs> well i have a very poor opinion of that book and i'll tell you why his environmental histories are fantastic you know he doesn't even talk about the internment of of uh, uh the chinese at all 
During the 62 war, the internment of the Chinese should have been a major theme for somebody who claims to be against majoritarianism and this and that. He just... I challenge everybody on this show to go through that book and find me one paragraph about the Chinese internment. You won't be able to find it. So Abhishek that in itself was a this thing. Sorry about that. I thought you were done. Uh, Abhishek wants to know, sir, Green Revolution was a good short theme, short term aid scheme, short term scheme to solve the problem of hunger during the 70s. What second order and third order effect would have after it ended the problem of hunger in India? Well, the soil has become worse. Plus, you have this. Go ahead. The soil has become much, much worse. Uh, you now have the green revolution belt is now the cancer belt because everywhere you've now had to start using uh, uh, fertilizers, phosphate fertilizers, and God knows what are the kind of fertilizers. Where everywhere where fertilizer usage is high, cancer rates are skyrocketing. Uh, you also have this issue that it did not lead to, of course, that, that's a different matter, uh, to the kind of uh, land holding patterns that had to change, but that's more of a social issue. The third order effect has been that your uh, long-term food security is destroyed. You've lost diversity in your crops. It's not as bad as the Irish potato famine where everybody depended just on potatoes. One variety of potatoes, fine. You at least have about 10, 15 varieties of rice. But before this, you had some two, 300 varieties of rice more. Over in India, you had about 2,000, 3,000 different varieties of rice which you've lost. All of that is gone. The next thing has been, you know, this pollution that you see in Delhi, direct result. Why? Because it gave you the confidence that you could harness nature to grow things where they are not meant to be grown. So you started growing rice in the wheat belt and crap like that. Armed with this thing that science can solve all your problems. And clearly it did not. Yes, indeed. Uh, next question, Kanta Batata wants to know, why is there no animosity among, against Americans by the Japanese after they drum, drop the nuclear bombs on them? I can't imagine India not having animosity against Pakistan if we had dropped bombs. Mm. See, this is what happens when you are, in a sense, mentally colonized. First, remember, the post-bomb American occupation was very mild. The pre-bombed Japanese self-rule was extremely harsh. So even compared to uh, uh, their own independent past, they found that they had much better legal protections and things like that when the Americans occupied them. The quality of living uh, uh, rose fantastically to a stage which Japan had never experienced. So what ended up happening was that the Japanese kind of got in your to it in much the same way that you know, states like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan literally had to be given their independence. They did not want to leave the USSR. They had to be told from Moscow, you are now free. And they were like, but we didn't ask for independence. Apparently, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev started crying, the president of uh, uh, Kazakhstan. He started crying when he was given independence. Like, what am I going to do? This is like Gaul under the Romans. You know, when uh, Rome invaded Gaul under Julius Caesar, a quarter of the population, Gaul's population was about 4 million at the time. He killed off almost a quarter of its population. It was horrific. It was genocidal. But Gaul became the most loyal state of the Roman Empire. It's very same with other elements of the, Ro uh, of the Roman Empire as well. Most of them did not want to break away. Uh, the only reason they separated was because the Germans would come and conquer parts of them or the Parthians would come and conquer parts of them. The only really rebellious province that way was Judea, Israel. Right. And that was for reasons that they didn't want to tolerate the kind of because everybody else was pagan and they were happy to accept each other's gods. They weren't willing to accept Roman gods and things like that. So this is things that we've seen throughout history that when the rule is mild, uh, it's the same way most Indians bore no ill will towards Britain. 
I mean, you have atrocity literature. You'll come across that in Japan. You will come across American atrocity literature and uh, books on the bomb and what was done to them during the war. But when you see a Brit on the road, you say, Haramzade, Kamine, Tune Mereko, Doso Sal, Ye, Rul, Kia, Mar, Mar, Mar. No. So even we don't have that animosity against them. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very similar because let's be clear, and this was very clear to us in Bengal. British rule, even at its worst, was any day better than Sirajuddola and his cohorts. Okay. British rule, even at its worst, was any day better than Mughal rule. We're very clear about that. Next question. Uh, if it is not clear, I will stop reading and you can read from here on. Mr. Lee, sure. you have said? Mr. Lee, you have said on several occasions that Russia is a white Saudi Arabia. Does the economy of Canada, which is heavy on mining and forestry, yes, not just Canada, also Australia. But the thing about Canada and Australia is they have done the Dubai Abu Dhabi model. What is the Dubai Abu Dhabi model, which is now going to become the Saudi model? You become rich on the basis of commodities, and then you invest in a human uh, uh, capital. You switch it from a commodities-based economy to an information-based economy and a productivity and a human intelligence-based economy. Russia never did that. When its industrialization came to a grind in 1990, when it broke up, they were just happy surviving on commodities and they did not even feel the need to invest. Today, Russian knowledge, you, you look at how many papers are published now, uh, uh, scientific papers. The percentage of scientific papers published in Russian was much higher during the USSR than it has been under Russia. It still has a significant population of uh, very, very smart people. But that population keeps reducing, 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 reducing over time. There's nothing you can do about it. You tell me what Russian consumer product would you buy? Nothing. Now, there is always a difference between consumer products and uh, industrial products. So, for example, American planes are the best in the world. But you won't touch an American car with a barge pole unless you're a banker who thinks a Mustang is a great car. It's a horrible car, by the way. Uh, you really won't buy it. Okay, uh, a lot of people, she included, like Tesla. I don't, because I don't think it has all the luxuries and things like that required. And incidentally, in Britain, it's come up as the 15th most unreliable car uh, this year. So, uh, uh, but Britain produces other things. Rolls-Royce engines, for example, which you would buy without the blink of an eyelid. America produces fantastic Boeing aircraft. Okay. Uh, 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 you, you will not buy a Chinese civil airliner if your life depended on it because it would crash out of the sky. But you wouldn't think twice about buying a Samsung phone or an Apple phone made in China, would you? Tell me one commodity that comes out of Russia that you would buy without a thought other than caviar. You won't. That is why. All right, take a break. Mr. Lee, in July this year, PM Modi inaugurated one the International uh, Bullion Exchange in Ahmedabad. Shri, one second, one second, one second. Yeah. I'm just going to go get some water. It's going to take me two minutes because my leg is sprained. Okay, so okay. I'm going to take about two minutes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, but just go ahead. to add, add yeah. one last thing to the previous question. See, with uh, 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 Canada, Bombardier is a Canadian company. Today, the Airbus A220 was actually the Bombardier C300. And you would buy it blindly. It's uh, the A220 has completely obliterated the Embraer E2 series from the market. And now Embraer has to come up with a new product. Okay. Uh, Australia, I can tell you, they produce some of the most best mining equipment and things like that. There are a lot of things Australia produces at the industrial level. It's the subcomponents level, which you won't see the final product, which are totally worth buying. Right. So it manifests in several different ways. So those two are not Saudi Arabia. Well, they are. <laughs> Saudi Arabia is no longer Saudi Arabia. Therein lies the problem. Saudi Arabia within the next 20, 30 years is not going to be Saudi Arabia. Uh, we will no longer be able to use the term white Saudi Arabia. We'll have to start using the term brown or yellow or white Russia. 
unfortunately. So I will be back in two minutes. Thank you, Abhijit. And viewers, a small request for all of you, from all of you, to subscribe to this channel. I, we've been looking at some stats, and now about 60% of all our viewers are subscribers, but 40% are still not. And I'm wondering what is it that you are waiting for so that you can subscribe after we have achieved that milestone. If you could please kindly send in via comments what is it, what it is that you think is not still there that uh, would perhaps uh, make you from not subscribing to us. I know I'm going about it in a roundabout way. What I'm saying is, what is it that you are missing on this channel? We'll try our best to fulfill your wish. Uh, we are an evolving uh, channel. We don't have any uh, egos. We like to see what value we are bringing to you. And if we think that we can do better, we'll absolutely try and do so. There's nothing uh, you know, fanciful, fanciful about it. We have come far from where we were. Like last one year, we've grown close to about, I would say, 60 70%. And that kind of growth is amazing. And I would like to and hope that it would continue. And I'm still waiting for uh, Mr. Tamil Arasan, a.k.a. Abhijit Ayer Mitra, to make an appearance. And I believe he still has not made an appearance. Uh, let's see, one second. I'm trying to see if he's there. He's not. So um, he's taken a break to drink water. And I think he may have also uh, accidentally logged himself off. But that's OK. He'll come back on. And I'm going to try my camera to see if it's any better than what it was a little while ago. I can see myself fine. I don't know how you guys are seeing. So just tell me, turn off camera and I'll do so pronto. I'm waiting for comments from you guys. All right. Nobody has said anything, so I'm taking it that uh, it's okay. Uh, so the camera is fine. Thank you so much. I've got a couple of people saying that the camera is fine. And uh, I'll continue to use the camera until you guys say, no, 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 turn it off. Uh, sound not good. Sound is cracking. I know that's a challenge. And Abhijit is back. Go ahead, Abhijit. Namaste. Next question, please. Question. Simple life. Simple life. It's a Hindu. Yeah, you go ahead and read. I, I don't want to read it. Still bad. Okay. Did the Hindu and Indian kings have a range of bows for short and long range? And were they similar to Turkish and Mongol short bows or an English long bow? Look, they, uh, as far as we can tell, because we still don't have a. Uh, <coughs> Unlike the Welsh longbowmen, we still have their uh, uh, training manuals and things like that. We have a lot of description of what Mongol and uh, Turkic uh, archers carried by their enemies mostly. They didn't maintain too many written records. For India, we have found different kinds of bows, but were they used as, like, you know, for example, every military officer will carry both their rifle as well as their uh, pistol. Uh, we don't know if they had different kinds of bows. Uh, there haven't been any burials that we've discovered because, you know, mostly we have cremations. The burials, like the Sanauli uh, 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 burial, for example, it's lots of similar kinds of bows. It's not uh, 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 different bows for different purposes. Mostly, remember, the bow changed based on the enemy you were facing. So you won't see an immediate change. It it will happen over centuries, uh, depending on the enemy and the what is the majority you're facing. And then it, among, say, three, four different kinds of bows, you choose what could fit everybody. Uh, this is generally the pattern we see. And when you say Indian kings, we don't know who. Because, you know, we don't have a custom of grave goods. Right. And bows are always made of degradable material, either uh, cow hide or animal hide or uh, uh, wood. 
usually a mixture of both uh, animal material and uh, wood combined together glued together and stressed over a period of time so there's really no way of telling accurately if they had different we can't even tell very accurately with turks and mongols it's only based on descriptions that we can tell with the english we know for a fact that at the same time some of their troops used the longbow like at crecy and ajincourt but the welsh longbow men were a highly specific type with a very specific type of weapon in july this year pm modi inaugurated the international bullion exchange in ahmedabad and no uh, a gold smuggling has to do with all kinds of other controls that you have on gold okay it has to do why do people want gold in this country first answer that question it's because there is no faith in your financial instruments gold is something they can reliably invest in as a financial instrument gold is more reliable than the rupee gold is more reliable than the reserve bank of india that being the case <clears throat> how is a bullion exchange going to solve that problem maybe she has a different view on this uh sheet you um no gold bullion exchange is essentially for commodities for people to try and you know ride out the fluctuations in the gold pricing when they are acquiring gold for example jewelers who might want it to make uh, ornaments and so on and so forth so you an exchange gives you a way to predict the future you buy the futures commodities and you know that say 10 months down the road even if the real market price is more than what you signed up for you are saved that's what it gives you essentially futures commodities exchange it's already been there mcx is one such exchange however mcx was sort of mishandled by the upa government and and now it is being ravaged and plundered and it also has the same problems that nse has and uh, therefore i think maybe modi is trying to tr- make a clean break and make ahmedabad the financial capital of india not mumbai that is i think this is the first step towards that goal my in my opinion next question please simple life why did sadar patel help suppress naval and air mutiny of march 15 1946 because as a rule if you allow military mutinies to happen before you will have no moral authority or legal authority to suppress them when they happen afterwards by march 15 1946 it was obviously clear that you were going to get independence and this could have been used to delay that entire process plus the discipline issues involved it was not something that was wanted Uh, by any stretch of the imagination by anyone it was bad for the congress it was bad for india i know it's very easy to say oh this was part of independence it was not okay so it is very good that he helped suppress it and it had to be suppressed on discipline grounds and on grounds of getting independence as soon as possible e i am how to send you Well, boss, I can't get it signed because it's a fat book. It's a really thick book, and I can't take it with me to Israel. If everybody started sending me their thing for the author to get the sign, I can't send it. Take it with me to Israel. It take up like ten books will take up about ten kgs. Can't do it. Sorry. Though I'll ask Ronan to uh, come on a signing trip here if possible. He comes reasonably often, once every four five years. so uh, i'll tell you when he's here next and you can meet up with him and get it signed uh chetan pai do you think festivals like ganesh chaturthi where hindus come on the streets are significant because of centuries yes ganesh chaturthi durga puja all these things are the, the communal festivals where we all meet as a community and celebrate it together these are extremely important holy Uh, how have marathas influenced tamil culture well sambar for starters sambar is something that comes very uniquely with a uh, a, a, a marathi uh, uh, impact on 
Tamil cuisine. And the most sambar, the name itself is apparently derived from Marathi. But the more important thing is Tanjore paintings. The entire school of Tanjore paintings takes off under the Sarfoji Maharajas of, uh, they were the Nayaks, no, Shri? They were yes, the Nayaks yes, of, that is correct. They, correct. they were the, uh, right. they were the, they were, they, they they were the Maratha governors. Of, yeah, and they declared uh, the independence Nayak. once the thing broke up. Yeah. Right. And after that, they became the Sarfoji Rajas. And the entire school of Tanjore painting comes from them. In fact, there is, uh, 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 I think, the best ever Tanjore painting is, in fact, not of Krishna or Vishnu. It is, in fact, of a Sarfoji Raja. Let me find it. I'm going to send it to Sachin. Uh, Sachin, can I find it and send it to you? And I will. Uh, 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 it was recently stolen. Uh, Tanjore painting. I'm going to send you. Ha, huh? perfect. This is the painting. It is probably the most exquisite. Uh, Tanjore painting that I have seen. Sachin, I'm going to email it to you in reply. Uh, if you could please uh, uh, bring it up on screen. Yeah. Expand this so that people can see the image. I want you to see in great detail how the uh, uh, dress of the Sarfoji Raja is painted. Uh, it is truly exquisite work. Yeah. Can you see? You can even see the crinkles in the dress. It's a truly exquisite painting. Because if you look at uh, Tanjore, modern Tanjore paintings, you'll see they don't have this waves. It's, it's a one-dimensional wave. Whereas here, it's a 3D wave. Look at the art. Go up a bit. Yeah. Look at the arm of the king sitting on the throne, his right arm. So when we're looking towards the leftmost with the over the armband and under the armband, can you see how the waves are forming? It's a very sophisticated technique. So uh, this was a huge impact that they had. To this date, we have a very, very strong Maharashtrian community. There's uh, 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 the, the Madurai Maharashtrians, no? Madurai has a huge population of them. Madurai has also got, yeah, but they're also, they're also Saurashtrians. Those people also are. Saurashtrians. One moment. Yeah. 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 There's Saurashtrians and there's Marathis as well. So it's, it's quite, uh, uh, it, I mean, we use it for us. They're all like for, all of you guys, we're all Kale Kale Madrasi Log. For us, they're all these Gore Gore uh, North Indian Log. But uh, yeah, so that was the impact. Shivam Goel, due to 3D printing and computing getting advanced, what impact will it make to the India? So we've spoken about this before, Shivam. It is going to wipe out India. We can't climb the industrial ladder anymore because it, it, what will it replace first? Think about it. It will replace the easiest to make things. So toothbrushes, tube lights maybe and things like that, which is what China started off on. What, unless you start off on that, you can't move to middle level production. So our avenue of moving to middle level production is gone. Probably our uh, 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 even our merchant Navy fleet will go. Because the uh, uh, demand for processed goods, then uh, of uh, produced goods, will be it makes no sense. Why have such a huge carbon footprint bringing it from China where you can just set up a unmanned factory that will be producing uh, tube lights and toothbrushes and things right there? Finished. So there's a lot of things where it's going to wipe out, and this is the standard thing that India does. We come too late to everything to make any sense. Ardik Tanki, Russian military platforms reach maturity in production when India buys them. They don't actually. What kind of leverage does that give us in the future and how to maximize it? Well, there's nothing you can realistically do, Baba, because this is like, you know, it, it's a bit like going to a musket producer 
in the bolt action rifle age and asking what kind of uh, leverage it gives you with a musket producer do you really even want to use muskets have you seen how badly those systems have performed in ukraine essentially it is russian lives and russian tactics that are compensating for weapons given that one plane hijacking ic814 gets everybody's relatives out outside the pmo uh, to let uh, sayed salahuddin or who half is sayed go you think a few thousand people dying a few hundred people dying a week is going to be something that the indian public can stomach you don't have any leverage realistically zero uh is Lord. american tech success cause of its exceptional science programs or because of cia dismantling the infrastructure of oh god uh, some conspiracy theory and talent going abroad for lack of infrastructure uh it's several things i told you this before i keep saying it it's not or 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 it's all things combined so i don't know if the cia is killing our people except a lot of people are dying we're not that great a threat to them huh? if they were so scared of our program then it would be russian uh, and chinese scientists who would be dying not isro scientists uh but uh basically american tech success is a lot of things it is exceptional science programs it is freedom of speech and research where you can keep researching things without fear it is the fact that you are a beacon of uh, a lifestyle so everybody wants to migrate out there and you get the creme de la creme of people to choose from it's your education system it's the freedom of a uh, uh, business uh, you know the lack of a uh, 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 vicious regulations and things like that to stall businesses and things like that and the celebration of business that happens out there so it's a lot of things it's multi cause uh, we are going to stop in about 5 minutes time so last three questions um go in 108 go ahead sir abhijit what do you see is the future of the baltic countries accept a job offer in estonia for sure but also be ready for a nuke to fall on your head at any point of time you will not have time to escape because if third world war starts i think the first countries to get nuked will be latvia lithuania estonia so best of luck to you if you're willing to live under that threat america lived under that threat during the cold war germany lived under that threat france lived under that threat if you can live under that threat sure go for it they different they different personally given a choice for india i would choose f15 any day every day day after day divyanshu in prepared vikrant based on mig 29k now they want hornet for the mid term and then they'll say yes indian military planning is a joke that is what i've been telling you from day one they based it just on the mig 29k and on the uh, uh, naval lca so you've got a 10 meter by 14 meter uh, 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 lift which can't store or lift more uh, 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 well technically it can't even lift a f18 anymore it can't lift a rafale anymore uh, it can't lift a tdvf so obviously for your next iteration where hopefully the lift will be bigger or wider at least to lift a plane even with folded wings that has a a, a, a width of more than 10 meters i think uh, the both f18 and rafale do you will uh, end up with uh, a fleet essentially based on three three different kinds of aircraft you'll have to maintain the mig 29 for uh, your admiral goshkov uh, vikramaditya you will have to uh, uh maintain the mig 29 for the uh, vikrant as well uh, i don't know what the status of the lc is i've stopped following it all together but maybe they'll switch over to the lca 
And for your third aircraft, you will have a third completely different variety of plane. So best of luck to you. And, you know, remember, you can't just retrofit a new bigger uh, lift onto an old uh, 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 ship so easily. Huh? It will cost you billions of dollars because all the technical drawings will have to be redone. This is Indian military planning. Congratulations. The question you should be asking is, why are they even running a competition for F-18 Hornet versus Rafale when your Air Force already has Rafale? And you would benefit from a common logistical chain. That in itself is corruption. Whoever decided to carry out a competition for Hornet versus Rafale, you have to investigate what corruption happened out there. They should have never been allowed to even run that competition. It is also a significant failure of leadership because no leader, knowing that you have this one type in your arsenal, would allow you to go in for another type. But what is Taxpayer ka money hai, barbaad karo, jalao. Is it a good idea to do advanced masters in financial markets? Oh, finance boss, don't ask me about finance. This is your question for you, Shri. Yes, and I would love to answer this question, but my voice is scratchy. Look, today... What you need to learn is how to make a software product using Lego blocks, which are nothing but open source blocks that keep changing. And you need to have the ability to stay on top of a changing foundation. If you can do that, you can make a lot of money, but it, be, be prepared to go through some uh, roller coaster rides. Thank you very much, Abhijit. And I apologize for the quality of my voice. There was nothing I could do. This is the best I could do. However, I was wise and left Abhijit to do most of the talking. However, he can also only last for so long without having a break. Thank you very much, Abhijit. We'll be back again next Monday, bright and early. Well, well, very well. Well, well, very well. Tata, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.